Welcome to the Art Corner. We're back again. Um, today's picture, and I've already cheated and sketched it for you, we're going to kind of do sort of a little Halloween-y picture. I mean, we're not there yet, but we're getting close. And so I wanted to use a couple of different textures, too, and show you a little bit of a uh, monochromatic, monochromatic uh, painting. Um, I think you'll enjoy this. This is just something for fun, and it is kind of quickie today, so it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is show you some things I'm going to use. I'm going to use a palette knife, uh, a contractor's brush, and this is a cool new instrument they have out now. It's just painter's um, pens, and they're kind of like a big Sharpie, but it's acrylic paint. So you can varnish over it, you can do a poly over it, and it doesn't smear. They're great for whiskers and fine detail. Signing your name. These are excellent for signing your name. And you can find those anywhere where they sell art supplies, but I have fallen in love with these painter pens. Okay, to get started this morning, like I said, I've already primed my canvas. Um, I've sketched my kitty cat who's looking at himself in a window, sort of, is what you might think. And um, I have sprayed it with hairspray so that my lines don't go away. Um, so we're gonna get started, we do background first. So let me get my brush, and I'm going to get kind of a medium-large brush. Got my water, got my palette with my paint colors ready to roll. I haven't painted this before, so this will be a first. Hang with me. Here is my white I'm going to get started with. A tiny, this sounds really weird, but a tiny little bit of blue and green mixed in my palette here to start my background. And then I'm going to add a little bit of a silver, a metallic silver to this so that when you turn your painting, you'll see a little bit of a glitter. Here we go. Get your paint rolling. This is acrylic. So your blending medium, of course, is water. I am going to be really rough with this background. This is really kind of what makes the painting artsy and interesting is this rough textured background. A little more green in there. Here we go. This is kind of like maybe a chilly, frosty morning looking painting where the cat might see itself in a see-through door. And it is a black cat. Here we go. If you'll notice, I'm not being smooth at all, intentionally. I'm being kind of rough with it, actually. And I'm going to get my paint on here real thick. And then I'm going to use a palette knife to scrape it around to give it even more of a rough texture. A friend of mine in Roanoke told me to close my eyes and paint. And I'm just not that brave. <laughs> but um, that would be one way to do a contemporary piece, to close your eyes and just go for it. That's not my style really, but I think I'm going to try it sometime just to see if she's on to something. Here we go. Rough, rough. Now, I'm just going to get, look, I'm globbing this paint on my brush, okay? Just like you would cake icing. And watch. I am just going to glob this paint on here. Get my silver, get my blue. And I'm talking caramel icing right here. We're just going to put, put this paint on here thick. Once you get it on there thick enough, you can use your palette knife. And you can tell this one's well worn. Get it and sort of shove that paint around. Give it some texture. Palette knives are wonderful, wonderful instruments to use for a really interesting painting. They're a lot of fun to use. Um, they make a gorgeous textured background. All right, here we go again. Gonna dab just a little black in there. Mix it with my silver tad bit of green. The 
corner down here is really darker. This is sort of a vague, vague corner. You really don't see anything much down here. And it might be because of the frost or just fog on the window. Not really sure. But if you'll notice, I am really laying it to it. There we go. And for my, my palette here, I'm just using a paper plate. You can use, let me tell you, a great palette. This is a really good homemade palette, is to get Chinese takeout plastic containers with the lid. The lid will keep your paint wet longer, and it's plastic, so the paint, you know, will slide around on there for you. You can put water in there. It's a great palette, great homemade palette. Here we go. Once again, get my palette knife. Smear this around. I'm going to start throwing it on here with the palette knife. This one's going to be kind of unusual. I told you we were going to kind of do a contemporary. Well, this is in that family. Down here. And really, the texture on the paint around this kitty is what's going to make him interesting. Here we go. It's a lot of fun, folks. Watch not to cover my other kitty up completely. But we're not going to see much of him. He is just a reflection. Another cool thing about palette knife painting is it's, it's thick, so it add some dimension to your painting, which when you hang it up, you know, it just raises everything you've done up off of the canvas. It's really pretty from a, from a side view, from a distance. Um, something I've always wanted to do too, and I'm giving you all my tricks, but one of the things I've always wanted to do is get just gold leaf paint, pure gold leaf that comes in a little jar, and just pour it down the canvas after you get through and just let it drip. And if you have a gold leaf chandelier or any gold leaf in your home at all, that gold leaf will just shimmer when the lights are on. Now the gold leaf paint that comes in a jar is oil-based, so you can put it on water, but you can't put water on oil. So you want to remember that. All right, here we go. I'm going to smooth it now back to my brush a little bit. I'm going to kind of go in a different direction down here. But you can see the thickness there that that palette knife gives you. Now, once I get a little bit more background, I'm going to get in closer to my cat. You don't want to do your background after you do your subject because you've worked hard on all your detail and it, it might cover it up and you'll have to do it all over again. So that's why we do the background first. Let's get in between. I want this a little smoother in here so you can kind of see what's going on. Since I sprayed my lines, I can go over it with my paint and they don't go away. Let's get some more texture up here. You could actually do this background in any color that matches the decor in your home or where you want to place this. That's the good thing about being your own artist. You don't have to be tied down to buying art. If you can paint for yourself, then you can make your painting match your home. And it adds so much to your home to have artwork, local artwork, your artwork. But being able to do it yourself, you know, and you can pass it down to your kids and there's just an awfully lot of advantages to doing your own art. Here we go. I know that looks messy, but that's okay. Let's get the palette knife and smooth that again. See how cool? 
There we go. And I deliberately want that kind of yucky. There we go. I can see from the light in the studio here that metallic silver shining through. And a crusty old used palette knife's got a few more little sticklies on it. And it helps to add a little more texture. So don't throw your palette knife away if it gets yucky. Sometimes it makes them better. All right. I need to get in a little closer with my cat. And then I'm going to start some detail on him. This is going to be a quickie, guys. Once again, I'm in my silver. Oh, that lost his ear there. See if we can find that ear again. There it is. There it is. Now, get in real close. And I'll show you a little trick when we get to the little ghosty looking cat. Smooth out that silver. I am ready for some cool weather. I don't know about you guys, but I am ready. It's time. This weekend, I think, marks the first day of fall. And we've had record heat. I'm ready for, had plenty of summer this year. Now, oh well, I kind of lost his ear, but I'll redraw it. we go. I think I've got it in there pretty good. A little more silver just because I like it. Yeah. I might take this one home. This would be the only cat my husband would let me have. Here we go. Now, there's our background. Now I'm going to change brushes and I've got a big puddle of black here. And just because it's a black cat does not mean you use only black. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of blue and a lot of cream in black animals. Now let's go ahead and get his head back on here. Draw that ear with my paintbrush. I've got an angled brush so you can draw with it. I want to get some really solid black for this kitty space right here. I'll show you. I'm going to use this black paint pen in a minute. Show you how great it is for whiskers, etc. This is our focal, this little kitty. So we want to make him dominant with your color. Really make him pop. I'm going to do the silhouette of his face. With your angle brush, you can draw. Follow your lines. Smooth little roll here for his neck. Again, start getting down here. Here's his little chest. There you go. Got a picture on this ear I lost. Doesn't have to be quite as bold as the rest of him because it is a little more distant. This front one needs to be though. So I'm adding some more paint here to make sure it's focal. Now, let's get into his isn't that cool looking already? Just kidding. I saw this somewhere on the internet. Um, don't plan on selling this, just keeping it for me. But this is uh, a rendition of another artist's rendition. As long as I don't sell it, I'm good. 
But here we go. I, I just loved it. And I bet her style is like this with a lot of things she does. There we go. The muscles in this cat. Now I want to start maybe getting into a little bit of the blue and silver on top of this black to define this cat's head turning. So we'll do a little highlight here. This sort of shows the cat turning and looking at himself in the door. There we go. Now we're gonna have whiskers and eyelashes too. We'll get to those in just a minute. Another bend in the cat's body as we come down here. Another bend here. And I actually should have come in a little more with the background, so I'm gonna do that right there. Let me change brushes real quick. Get that background in here so you can see a little curve here. Same with this. There we go. That's another reason you do background first. If you do make a mistake, you can just background right over it. Very dark and dominant right down the middle of this cat. So I'm really using pure black right in this area. Down, down. I know I'm all over the place. There we go. deliberately made this cat and its reflector off-center. Uh, sometimes that is just so much more interesting than putting something right in the middle of your canvas. Take it over to one side or the other. I've seen an awful lot on the internet lately of cows, etc. And they're like way up here in the corner or way down here in the corner. An off-centered painting is so much more interesting than just your regular right old there in the middle of the page. Do some of your paintings off-center. Here we go. I'm gonna bring his head around, get rid of some of those canvas holes. And I am gonna fade some of the bottom of this kitty with some more of my paint colors right down here. And I'm gonna do it with a brush to make sure I still maintain the form of this kitty cat. It's kind of a foggy morning. So we wanna bring some of that fog and we don't know if it's morning or not, up into this kitty cat. I'm gonna dry brush some swirls like you would a cloud right up in here. This kind of sets the tone for maybe a little Halloween picture with this foggy, cloudy look right up in his body. Dry brush clouds like this. Just get rid of all the excess water and paint off your brush. Use only your paint. Swirl it around. Here we go. I really want him to look foggy down here. Let's dry brush all that. There we go. Kind of like he's sitting in a puddle of fog. Make that real dominant. And a lot of times, too, an impressionistic or a more contemporary painting, they go a lot faster if you know what you're doing. They will just fly by. 
They're a lot of fun to do and it's kind of therapeutic. Adding a little blue to my white right here. Here we go, it's foggy, foggy. Real close to the edge without losing that line. Now, now let's get over here to this ghosty cat. What I wanna do with this buddy is, I wanna get my black, but I'm not gonna be as dominant. This is merely a reflection. So I'm going lighter with his black up here. You see a little bit, especially the outline. And one way you can check your drawing is look at your negative space. The space in between your two focals is called a negative space. And to make sure you've drawn it right, you want to make sure that this image in between looks just like your picture should. Looks like your picture. This is an actual object right there in between. Checking it to make sure I got them close enough. I actually need to bring this guy's nose in just a little bit. There we go. Now, using the edge of this angled brush, holding my pinky down on my canvas, pulling up for that straight line. Holding my pinky down controls my hand. Helps me, you know, keep it from moving around too much. There we go. Just the edge, we really want to be that predominant black. The edge of the ear, right here. There we go. Now, I'm going to go in here with a real faded black. Not as, not as strong as your main character. There we go. Then I'm going to put some fog over him. Let's get his cheek down here. There we go. See my lines because I hairsprayed them. It's really faded. But you can still see him. Now he does start becoming a little bit more obscured down in here. That's what we want. Then you want to start kind of making this artistic instead of so realistic. This back part needs to be. It's kind of there, but not really. And there's, you know, it's not as easy as you'd think. All right, let's get his neck round right there. Just sort of shoving my brush around to make it look choppy, to make it look vague, and then I'm vaguing him out right back in here. He's going to blend in with the background. Already up this far, he's still going to blend in with the background, okay? It's important that he doesn't look like his counterpart. This is only a ghostly reflection of that cat. Now, want just a little more deliberate black right here, closer to your image. Here also. Okay. The ear, let's get those dramatic highlights. Cleaning off my brush getting into my other paint and helping it go away. There we go. And I'm using a lot of silver and blue in this painting. I think they're pretty. Let me get over in here just a little bit. I missed some of that background. Now, let's get him faded out. Blah, 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 blah. Here we go with the paint. little bit of a black jar right in here, right down here. So he didn't completely go away. 
And I'm going to pick up this palette knife in a minute and start shoving it around. Here we go. Silver, silver. Oh, it's shining so pretty. You can buy silver metallic paint to anywhere, you know, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, anywhere they sell paint supplies. Um, Carl Jesse, here locally. Here we go. Right in here. And they're really fun to do contemporary with. Getting his ear. Making sure you see him up here. Now. Let's make his chest come down just a little lower. There we go. Now. Isn't this fun? If I had some gold leaf, I'd just pour it all over the top. Now I'm going to get up around the top of his head. Make sure those canvas holes are gone. And also make a little bit of some interesting squiggles up in here. Let's not make it so plain. There we go. Now, while that dries a little bit, let me show you some cool things with this paint pen. Okay, where did it go? I just saw it. Here it is. All right. Shake it up real good. Get the edge of your paint pen. And let's do some whiskers like this. See, it just is so fine and so fine. Do a few more over here. And it just sort of helps. Here, this cat has a few whiskers here, like that. He's got a couple of eyelashes that I want to be real careful. There we go. And his whiskers, of course. I'm going to start here so it fades. It gets smaller as there we go as it comes out like that. And you can use your paint pen to make it thicker where you want it thicker. Oh, I just love these. They're wonderful. And it is acrylic paint. You know, it's not Sharpie. It's acrylic paint. So you can use it just like you would your paintbrush paint. Maybe outline his ear just a little more for definition right here. And you don't really see the whiskers as much on the one in the reflection. Okay. Let's do just a little more interest right up in here. There we go. Isn't that cool? I just love these pens. They're really neat. Now, let's get down in here just for a minute, and I'm going to do a few more silver reflections here to show his turn. And just to give it some pop right in this area. I'm going to do a little bit of black globules. That's what I call them. Right down in here. Just to add some interest to this other cat. Put a little silver over it. Hey, this is like a really cool contemporary painting. Your kids would like this, your teenage kids. Or your sophisticated art friends really like this. A little more black up here. Pull it down some. There we go. A little bit on his nose more on his chest. Get your finger and mess with it. A good, a good artist is going to have paint all over their hands, okay? If you don't, you're, you're too neat. You need to have paint all over your hands. Now let me do this ear right here just a little bit. There we go. I think we're just about through. Maybe a few more little black iridescent areas back in here so that he sort of fades into the cloudy background. There 
you go. Your Halloween kitty reflection. I'm going to sign it with my fun paint pen right down here. Thank you for joining me today for the Art Corner. See you next time.